Hi, I'm going to do a study vlog today on GCSE English language skills for reading questions and our focus today is a what impression question. So firstly, what is an impression? Well, an impression is an idea, a feeling or opinion about something or someone. It's the kind of question where you're going to use inference to read between the lines and dig beneath the surface to see what a writer really thinks about a topic and also how they might persuade you to agree with them. We're going to look at some articles now um, about the idea of Welsh independence and we're going to see what impression we get of the idea of Welsh independence from each of the writers. They each have a different viewpoint. We're going to be looking at, do you think the writer supports Welsh independence? Why or why not? Our first article is from Yes Cymru. The headline is Welsh independence, historic debate in the Senedd. Responding to the historic debate in the Senedd, Welsh Parliament, calling for Wales to have the power to hold an independence referendum, the chair of Yes Cymru, the campaign for an independent Wales, Sean Jobbin said, life and politics in Wales is changing very quickly. Today sees the first ever debate on independence in the Senedd and the right of the Welsh Parliament to be able to decide on the future of Wales. The issue of an independent Wales is becoming more mainstream as people from different backgrounds see that the Welsh Parliament can do a better job of running Wales affairs than Westminster. Yes, Cymru's membership has more than doubled since the beginning of the COVID-19 crisis to nearly 6,000 and we have seen a huge increase in support on social media. The independence debate is not confined to Plaid Cymru. The Welsh Barometer poll in June 2020 showed that 37% of Labour voters in Wales support an independent Wales and a delegation from Yes, Cymru recently met Labour MS Jane Hutt for a general discussion on the need for the Senedd to have the powers to defend and promote Wales and also to choose its own future. With a Scottish independence referendum to be held in the next few years and a likelihood of Ireland reuniting, Wales must grab its future and not be at the mercy of it. Now here's text two. This is Marcus Stead and his headline is Welsh independence just isn't going to happen. The Welsh economy is not in a good way. Just one of the UK's FTSE top 100 companies is based in Wales, vehicle insurance firm Admiral. It is heavily reliant on the public sector for employment and on fiscal support from the rest of the UK. Figures released in July by the Office for National Statistics showed public spending in Wales was £13.7 billion, more than the total amount collected in taxes which works out at a deficit of £4,376 per person. At present, around 80% of the Welsh Government's funding comes directly from Westminster in the form of a block grant. Making up that shortfall in a post-independence Wales would be a huge task. Moreover, in an independent Wales, the Welsh Government would have to assume responsibility for, and therefore fund, areas of policy that are not currently devolved, including foreign policy, defence, law and order, pensions and broadcasting. There is also a huge amount of cross-border integration between England and Wales in public services and government administration. New bodies might need to be created after separation. For example, Welsh patients with serious liver problems are frequently treated in Birmingham. Meanwhile, the DVLA's base for the whole of the UK is in Swansea and is one of the city's largest employers, with more than 5,000 staff. After separation, this would have to be relocated elsewhere and a separate body for vehicle registration created for Wales. Welsh nationalism has always been a minority cause, but Brexit will render it all the more so. Finally, we have text three. This is Rhiannon Coslett's article, Brexit is giving Welsh nationalism a new popular appeal. The last time I visited family in North Wales, I was heartened to see the words Cofiwch Drewerin, Remember Trewerin, emblazoned on several walls. I'd read about how the patriotic slogan was popping up, meme-like, all over the country, but I hadn't seen it with my own eyes. Call me a misty-eyed Welsh nationalist if you like, but I felt quite emotional, ever since I was a little girl and my father pulled over the car to show me where the village once stood, 
I had known the story of Capel Callan, the community flooded in 1965 to create a reservoir for Liverpool in the Trewerin Valley and how it became a nationalist cause. The repeated vandalisation of the original graffiti, which the poet Make Stevens painted in the 1960s and which has now gained charity protection, has led to a kind of viral graffiti campaign, with Kovyuch Trewerin appearing on walls and slag heaps, alongside roads and near beaches, even on the side of mountains. It feels like the most significant display of Welsh pride I've seen in my lifetime. Since Brexit, there has been a resurgence of interest in Welsh independence. A recent YouGov poll found a third of people in Wales would support Welsh independence if it meant the country would stay in the EU, rising to 42% among 18-24s. to 24s. This follows independence rallies in Cardiff, Merthyr Tydfil and Carnarvon, where 10,000 people marched. The Brexit party may have come out on top in the European elections, but Plaid Cymru, which has positioned itself as the party for Welsh Remainers, took second place with 22.4% overtaking Labour for the first time in Wales. This Brexit effect can partially be put down to the sheer despair many feel about the political chaos in Westminster following the referendum. In the aftermath of the referendum, in which Wales voted to leave by a majority of 52.5% to 47.5%, I was frequently irritated by the coverage. Wales voted for Brexit, we were told, while commentators were bewildered by the communities who voted to leave, despite having benefited from EU funding. It is a valid point, but it usually ignores the fact that most of the predominantly Welsh-speaking areas voted to remain. It doesn't surprise me that those who believe their language and culture have been historically oppressed by English politicians would feel they have more in common with and are more protected by the EU27 countries. When the British state is floundering, the idea of self-determination within a larger, protective European framework has powerful appeal. So, what impression do you think is given of the idea of Wales' independence in each of these three texts? Well, you need to have a look at Beneath the Surface and how the writer supports their viewpoint. If you look at Yes Cymru, it's fairly clear this writer is pro-independence. If you look at Marcus Stead, it's fairly clear he's against Welsh independence. If you look at Rhiannon Coslett, it's perhaps not quite as clear-cut. A lot of what she says is positive about independence, but there is also a note of caution, perhaps, and she accepts why people might feel it's not a good idea. But she talks a lot in her article about Brexit and the impact that's had on the cause of Welsh nationalism. Now, when you answer a what impression question, you need to use evidence from the text, but you also need to explore in your own words what that evidence is suggesting. So here's an example of what an answer might look like looking at Brianna and Coslett's article. Coslett gives a sense that Wales' independence is something that many people in Wales care about. She says she was heartened to see Kovyuk Dureren on the walls in North Wales, which suggests she was glad many people were supporting the Welsh cause. She sees the slogan as patriotic, which means that she therefore probably views people who do not support Wales' independence as unpatriotic and not caring about Wales. Can you see in this answer where the person has not only used quotations from the text, but they fully explored what those quotations imply, what impression they give about what Coslett thinks about Welsh independence? It's that sense of probing the text that an examiner really wants to see. So, when you answer a what impressions question, think to yourself, are you using lots of evidence from the text to support your reading? Lots of close tracking of the text would be really good to support this kind of answer. But your answer has to be more than simply evidence. You have to use your own words to probe those quotations, what they mean, what they suggest, what they imply beneath the surface. Have you made sure that your answer is completely focused on the impression the writer gives of whatever it is you're being asked about, in this case, Welsh independence? It's really important to stay completely focused in this kind of answer. Hit subscribe if you'd like to follow my vlog for more updates on teaching, reading and studying.